Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure you turn on your sound so that you get to hear what is going on for this show because we have got an amazing show lined up for you here today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Una Doyle. I'm a business development coach for creatives and the founder of creativeflow.tv. Um, and what I do is I help business owners to implement strategies and to create productive habits in ways that align with their natural strengths and talents. And this is really important because it allows them to grow their business profitably in less time and have lots of energy so they can be happy, healthy and wealthy. Right now, today we are talking about how to get paid. This is obviously really, really important. <laughs> Okay, so um, it's a very important topic because there's no point working really, really hard if you don't actually get paid for your endeavours, all right? So, um, before we get into that, I just want to ask you to um, to share this out, please like. And also, I've, I've bumped into a few people in the last week, a few online and some in person as well, who've said to me, oh, I've been watching your show. Do me a favour, say hi in the comments, okay, whether I know you or whether I don't. Um, because I would love to, you know, see who, who it is. I don't actually get to see who it is that's viewing the show. So do please um, have a look at that. Um, all right. So just want to share this out myself as well. So we're talking about how to get paid. And I have a very important resource for you as well today. Uh, the link is in the description and I'll talk to you more about that um, a little in a little bit. All right then. So... Um, where are we here? We are, let me just share this out and, and then we can get going on this because uh, I'm quite excited about this. There we are, post, excellent. All right, so um, I want to share with you a couple of quotes, all right? Um, uh, the first one is, nothing good in this world comes free. For everything, there's a payment of time, money, or soul. <laughs> and I'm sure you probably feel like this, when you um, uh, you know when you've, when you've kind of done work and maybe the client is slow to pay or maybe they even haven't paid um, or they're not even paying you enough in the first place it probably really feels like you're spending all of those things you know but what are you getting in return right and there is another one um, uh, as it's quite appropriate seeing as it's um, uh, on in the in the cinema. Um, I'm sure I'll take you with pleasure, the Queen said. Tuppence a week and jam every other day. Alice couldn't help laughing as she said, I don't want you to hire me and I don't care for jam. It's very good jam, said the Queen. Well, I don't want it today at any rate. You couldn't have it if you did want it, the Queen said. The rule is jam today and jam yesterday, but never today. It must come some time to jam today, Alice said. No, it can't, said the Queen. It's jam every other day, and today isn't an other day. <laughs> so, uh, obviously that's Lewis Carroll um, from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Now, the, the thing is, is that, you know, you might be feeling this, that you're working really hard, maybe you're even, you know, maybe you've got plenty of clients, but it, you're kind of on this hamster wheel. And what do you do to make sure that the money is coming in so that, you know, you're not having this feast and famine thing going on, right? Um, and um, I, I just think it's so important the way that you approach getting paid. Now, there was a client I was working with, video production company, and the owner um, was in a situation where they, they, they were kind of a bit distracted in a, in a session. And I was like, um, what is going on? And they said, well, I, I'm just a bit stressed because um, we're supposed to be doing this, you know, this shoot next week. And I'm supposed to be getting all these freelancers lined up for it. And I've already got some of them, you know, kind of semi booked in. But if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose them. And I said, well, what's the problem? And she said, well, the client hasn't paid a deposit yet. Um, and so I'm a bit worried about going ahead with the shoot when they haven't done that. Now this, I think it was on like the Wednesday and they were supposed to shoot on the Monday. And you know, there was lots of people involved. It, it wasn't even just them. And so I was like, okay, look, this is what I want you to, um, I want you to call the client to say this or email them and say this and then come back and you know that things are kind of, are happening one way or another. Um, and they got an instant response because um, they did three, the three things that I talked about, you know, um, they were able to do two of those in that moment. And um, so I, I'll tell you what they are. Um, and the other thing that happens a lot with um, clients and, and people who talk to me about becoming clients and that I interact with, you know, lot, see, meet with lots of creatives here and there. 
um, is scope creep. It's where people start off saying, okay, we want to have this. And then by the time you finish, they've added this and this and this and this and this. And so all of a sudden you're doing double the work, but you're still getting the same amount of pay. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about is to tell you how to avoid that, because I know um, I know for many of us creatives, our, our work is so personal. Um, and also this is the kind of thing that isn't usually taught in design school or film school or whatever kind of, you know, creative you are. So, um, and, and there's some reasons why this is so important. Okay, I want to talk to you about the impact of not getting paid on time. Okay, now obviously the first one is that it's a it's a problem from a profit point of view, and it's a problem from a cash flow point of view. But it also is something that costs you time, and time is money. Okay, so when the time that you spend chasing after clients, or the time you spend worrying about not getting paid by that client, or the time that you spend being reluctant and to go out and get more clients because you might do the whole thing again and not get paid or not get paid on time and that messes up your mortgage payment and your holiday and the things that you were trying to plan and um, you know it, it does actually cause you to be less profitable okay um, and one of the reasons is is that quite often the clients that tend not to pay or not to pay on time are often the ones that are the most hassle to deal with anyway these are the clients from hell that cause you nightmares okay that cause this scope creep that often are very unappreciative of the work that you do anyway um, so the thing is, is that if you have this issue, the chances are you don't have the quality of client that you would actually like to be working with. Um, and, and this has a knock on effect on how confident you are. And of course, the less confident you are, the less kind of positive vibes you're going to give off to prospective new clients and the less likely you are to attract new work and to attract, you know, better clients. So. You know, and there's very practical reasons why this impacts on your business as well. It's because particularly if you are, you know, if you do have, uh, you know, some team members or maybe you have a kind of outsourced team that you bring in for projects, that has a really, you know, significant knock on effect on how you can resource and how you can do your planning. OK, um, so, you know, so some really important things there. But I think one of the most significant ones is stress. OK, if you are worried about when money is coming in or even if money is coming in, then that is going to cause you perhaps to have sleepless nights or certainly just be wasting energy and things are niggling in the back of your head. And, and then you can't focus and then you're not going to be able to be as creative as you would be otherwise. OK, so if you think this is not something to be concerned about, it is. And if you are lucky enough not to have been in this position, then fantastic. But make sure, stay tuned, because I want to make sure that you don't encounter this. I've had it where clients have gone along merrily, for even sometimes for a few years, and all of a sudden, boom, they get hit with this. I do not want that to happen to you. Okay, so here we are. Here's the three steps to make sure that you not only get paid, but you get paid on time. And in fact, implementing these often means that you actually get paid more as well. So who doesn't want that? So the first one is boundaries. Okay, now... <laughs> this comes up again and again and again and quite often when I'm working with clients and they might not be saying to me they're not getting paid but they often are saying I don't have enough time and that's usually because of scope treat creep or they're kind of they're, they're delaying things and procrastinating and all of this because they're not getting paid properly for what they're doing so how do you actually implement boundaries what do I mean by that well first of all you've got to actually make up your mind as to you know what is it that your boundaries are you've got to set your standards okay um, and they have to be specific all right so you need to actually lay out all right so this is the way that I operate okay and it doesn't matter what the industry does you know maybe you can tweak what the industry does maybe you go completely against what the industry does you know, I mean, I, I know of coaches that send out invoices and then they wait to get paid. I don't work unless I get paid first. And maybe you can be in that position too. Um, maybe you need to, you know, do something else. I'll talk about ways that you can structure things in a, in a bit. But you've got to get specific about, okay, this is the way I operate. And this is the only way that I operate. So I, I want you to get really clear on those boundaries first. Um, and the thing is, is that if you find it hard to stick to those boundaries, then, you know, you've, 
this is all about how you value yourself. It's all about how, um, uh, you know, how much self-belief you have. Because if you find that you don't stick to those boundaries, then that's probably why. And the interesting thing is, is that the more focused you get on your ideal clients and, and what kind of market it is that you are serving, um, and you know that, that you are really able to position yourself as the go-to person for that ideal client, then it's so much easier to set these boundaries. And that is gonna help you to be more confident as well, okay? So boundaries, really, really important. Um, then the next strategy is all around structures. It's about putting the, the best structures for you in place, okay, in order to get paid. Now these actually have a positive knock-on effect in other places as well. Now the first structure is to have a great sales process in place. So think about, you know, even right from where you are going out to generate leads, are you fishing in the right pond? Are you fishing in a stinky pond full of fish that are probably not going to be great, <laughs> you know, for you to be working with? Um, you know, leave them alone. Go, go and fish somewhere where there's nice clean water and healthy fish with healthy attitudes, right? Apologies for stretching out this metaphor, but you know what I mean. <laughs> So, you know, right from the get-go, be looking to attract people to work with who are in line with you and your values and the way that you want to work, because you've already got specific about that in your in the boundary section. Um, and make sure that comes through in the sales process, okay? So that at every step along the way, that it's really clear who they are, who you are, and the value, you know, that you're each bringing to the party. Um, and of course, part of that is usually, there's usually some kind, for creative work, there's often some kind of, you know, brief um, or proposal, or even like if you have creative products, like say you were selling art or photographs or something, um, then, you know, making sure you have really good descriptions um, so that people know what they're buying and that you have a contract in place, you have great terms and conditions. Please see a solicitor if you need to. Um, you know, to put these things in place and to cover you in case, you know, a case of eventualities. Even just things like who owns the copyright? You know, get really clear on that. Now, I, I would imagine most of you as creatives would be thinking about that, but just in case, please be really clear and make sure it is in writing. No matter how well you know somebody, and even if you've worked with them before, there is nothing wrong with you implementing a contract that they haven't signed before and getting them to sign it now. All it's gonna do is make you look more professional. And if they have a problem with that, you know, then it's probably time for them to hit the road. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing I want you to structure is the way that you're actually paid. Okay, so for me, I'm pretty much getting paid up front, even when like I'm, I'm just in the process of doing, um, you know, where I'm doing like team workshops and leadership work with um, directors and managers in a business. So it's a larger creative business. Um, and so they, you know, they are able to pay in installments, but they're paying the installments here and I'm doing the work, work across here. So, you know, the, the, the money, kind of all comes in and I'm still doing the work, there's no way that I'm gonna be doing work and then not get paid for it. Now, if you're in an industry, say design, like typically in design, a lot of people, maybe they get a deposit, um, and I think most would get a deposit, and then they look to you know, get paid at the end. So what I'm suggesting to you is instead, look to have staged payments and build that into your contract. So you have, uh, once the, you know, the brief is agreed, um, and you know exactly what you're doing, the quote is accepted, they pay a deposit. Get as big a deposit as you can, minimum 25%, aim for 50 if you can get it um, and then you know look to break down the work particularly at the points where the work goes back to the client okay because that's the point where often it gets delayed that you know they can be rushing you and rushing you and rushing you to get something done it comes back to them and it's like it disappears into a black hole so <laughs> I don't want you to be having that so it's really important that you know you um, you know, once it goes back to them, boom, they're due another payment. Or maybe you've all worked it out by date. So whether it's by date or whether it's by stage of the project, make sure that you're getting paid at each stage. And then even if you have to agree to, you know, kind of terms of, of credit, um, 
then at least you know that that is coming and you can plan for that. And the other thing that, that you can do as well is that there is nothing wrong if people want to pay in installments that maybe they pay extra, okay? And quite often that encourages people to pay up front. You know, so quite often people would like the opportunity. Now, of course, they have to trust you to do that. OK, so you have to you know, be making sure that it's part of your sales process that you are demonstrating your value. Um, and, and really, you want it to be the situation where you're the only one that they want to work with. Um, OK, so the so we talked about sales process, brief and contract and stage payments. Brilliant. OK, so the next thing I want to talk about, and by the way, please pop any questions you've got in the comments and I will come to those um, after this next section. And I have a few questions. I just realized they're on the other side of my phone, but I'll get them in a moment. Um, so so let me let me get on to the third stage, the uh, third strategy here, which is screening. Um, and so all through the sales process and through all your communications, um, even when you meet people out networking, I mean, I've had it a few times where I've maybe met someone out networking and I've kind of, and they're kind of expressing interest in what I do, but I'm just getting a vibe that's going, yeah, I don't think I'm a good for, fit with this person. I don't think I'd enjoy working with them. Um, you know, I'm, I would have to convince them every step of the way. And it's just like, that's not my, my idea of an ideal client. So, you know, first of all, trust your gut instinct. If your gut instinct is going, no, don't touch this person with a barge pole, listen to it, okay? Um, so be looking at their communication, you know, how they communicate in person or on the phone and Skype, um, in their emails. So, you know, are they like really abrupt? Are they actually open and honest? Are they answering your questions? Are they forthcoming with information? Or is it a bit like, trying to get blood out of stone, getting it from them. And do they appreciate what you're doing? Do they say, thank you? Do they say, please? You know, it's just like, do they have manners, basically? Um, and so, and even though like there are some, you know, personality profiles that, that will be less, um, you know, let, I wouldn't say less friendly, but, you know, less into the banter and the chat and how was your weekend and things like that. And they just get straight down to the business. But there's still no excuse for anybody being rude, okay? That has nothing to do with the profile. That's just bad manners. So, so really look at that and be screening it and be looking at what do they say and what do they do? And do those things match? And if those things don't match, that is a clear sign that if they say they're going to pay you, Maybe they're not going to, because if they don't keep their word about the little things, then they sure as heck aren't going to keep their word about the big things, okay? So, um, I'll, I'll just check for uh, questions now in a moment. Let me have a look and see. Um, just bear with me. I just have to reach over here to get these, uh, these questions. That was just my water bottle, don't worry about that. It's steel, it won't have broken. Um, okay, so yes, I was just popping down some questions that I'd, um, I commonly get around this as well. So let me just check what we have here. Okay, so uh, yes, listening to your gut is incredibly valuable. I've always regretted it when I haven't. Oh my God, you and me both. <laughs> and I think most people have probably had a situation when that has happened. And, and the thing is, please learn from that. If that has happened to you, then, you know, don't, you know, don't kind of go and repeat the same mistake again. I mean, that's that's just silly. Um, so, oh, I love this. Yes, uh, boundaries are so important in life as well as business. Good fences make for good neighbours. Yeah, interesting. See, that's, and that's, you know, obviously bringing to mind a physical boundary. Um, uh, but, but you just want to, you know, get clear on those boundaries. And it's, it's really interesting because when you make a decision about boundaries, then it's amazing how often the people who wouldn't kind of, you know, respect those boundaries, they just don't seem to maybe come around as much. Or, or maybe you kind of get like one testing you to see, do you really mean it? And if you stick to your boundaries, then quite often you just don't even have to mention them, you know? So, um, yeah, that's really important. Okay, so just a couple of quick questions before we wrap up. Um, um, okay, so, oh yeah, well, this one, I've tried setting boundaries, but it's hard with existing clients. Okay, so this is from, and I've had this a few times with clients who've, they've got existing clients and then they're looking to implement these new ways of working. Um, so what I would say is to, you know, number one, negotiate a path to bring them up to your current standards. Okay, so that might be, 
It might be about pricing, it might be about the way that they pay, it might be about the contract. So if you talk to them and say, okay, look, you know, with all my new clients, this is what's happening and this is where you are now and this is the gap. So let's look at, you know, a way to move you there. Okay, and so maybe you do it um, over one or two jobs, maybe you do it over a time period, maybe they're happy to just go with that now. Who knows? They might have been sat there thinking, oh man, this, I really feel guilty. This person's undercharging me and kind of letting me get away with blue murder. Um, and maybe they're just going to respect you. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, I would also really ask, Given their past behavior and past payment patterns or lack of payment patterns, do you still want them as a client? Okay, now I have come across it twice, once as an actor and once uh, with a creative business, where people have gone back to work for people who haven't paid them because they're promised, okay, look, we'll come and do this and then I'll get the money from doing that and pay you with it. And I was like, are you mad? <laughs> Now, one of them, I do know what happened and they did get the money, but they ended up doing something that they weren't particularly keen on um, and working with people they weren't particularly keen on working with in order to make that happen. And I was like, what? What would have filled that vacuum? You know, nature abhors a vacuum. If you let some clients go because they don't meet your current standards, then, you know, you have the space. You have the time to go out and market to the people who you do want to be working with. And you know, you have that space, you'd be amazed how things might just kind of start coming to you. Um, okay, so uh, another one here is, what if the client won't accept my terms? Um, so if they won't accept your terms, just just leave, <laughs> okay, just run. You know, it's like, there, it's a bad sign, okay? Just, 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 do not go there. There's one exception to that, okay? And that's if they were a big corporate client where they have got very, very set procedures, okay? Because you notice like in a big company, you know, they have all these different departments and all the departments have to talk to each other and they have all these systems and they're set in stone, except what you may well find, okay? And I had this, I, you know, when I used to work in PR and communications um, and I went in house, I had worked agency and I went in house, I, I worked for Network Rail and I worked for some local authorities, okay? And in, in both of those places, they had those real systems, yet because I was doing PR and comms, I often um, employed photographers um, and I, you know, I would always negotiate with them and you know they would be like look I can't afford to wait this amount of time to get paid and so I personally would go to accounts and phone them and go and visit them whatever the situation was and make sure that that person got paid much much faster than they would have done otherwise and the reason I did that was because I had a relationship with them I valued what they did they were the only one that I wanted doing that job okay so be the one and only okay I feel like breaking out into song now <laughs> Okay, so, you know, it's all about boundaries, you've got to set them, you've, they've got to be specific, and you've got to stick to them. And if you're really struggling to meet those boundaries, then there's got to be some inner work that needs to be done. And go and check out last week's live show, which is all about the inner game of focus, and I'll talk about some of that stuff there, actually. So the second strategy is structures, okay? You've got to have them in place from, from the moment, like and even where you're generating your leads, right through to when the sale happens and you have a contract, um, and all the communication after to that and making sure that you're staging your payments or getting paid up front if you can um, and the final thing is about screening and the most important part of that is your gut instinct but be aware you know just because so often people will say like hindsight is 2020 vision and actually it's kind of like relationships <laughs> you know think to yourself if I had to explain the way this client communicates with me or the way this client behaves with me to somebody else would I be embarrassed well, if that's the case, that is a sign that you ought to be listening to your gut instinct and either looking to repair that relationship and bring it up to standard or to be able to kind of let that go in a professional way, of course. Um, 
and um, yeah, you know, so you've got to be screening, you, you've got to be valuing yourself as well. Okay, look, if you've got other questions, I'm going to have to run in a moment, so please pop them in the comments. I will come back. I'll get a little notification um, when you do that, and I will come back and answer any questions you have, or maybe you just want to share your experiences. I know this can be a very emotive issue, because we're talking about money, and we're talking about clients, and we're talking about how people value you and your creative work, and how you value yourself and your own creative work as well. So, um, now, have you found today's show valuable, okay? If so, please share this out to your contacts, right? Um, because I'm on this mission to help as many creative business owners as I can. So please like, comment, share, uh, you know, and get this out there. Oh, and I just wanted to tell you briefly about the resource as well that I was telling you about. Um, so this is, it's here, okay? So it's the 21 tools to increase sales for your creative business. Now, these tools actually include some ways that you can actually get paid um, and get paid faster as well. So um, different ways that you can actually, you know, increase your business. So there's a, a whole host of things that this is going to help you with. Um, it's going to help you to kind of save time. It's going to help you to, you know, um, uh, work better with your clients and know what they really want to buy from you. Um, and yeah, just put all the things in place that are, are going to really help you. And it's not only, it's not just a list of tools, okay? Um, it's actually a guide that is explaining how and when to use those tools tools as well. So creativeflow.tv forward slash 21 tools. Nice and simple for you to remember. 21 tools to increase your sales. So do go, it's free. There's no charge. Okay. It's not going to cost you a penny. So do go and download that. And I'd love your feedback. So please do message me and let me know what you think of it as well. Okay. So um, I'm Una Doyle, founder of creativeflow.tv, um, business coach for creatives. And remember, the fortune is in the flow. Have a great week, everybody. I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Bye.